All right, guys, welcome back. I'm here to do a video on tritrations, or you may call them, well, some people may call them neutralization reactions. Now, in a titration and a neutralization reaction, you're taking an acid, you're taking a base, you're mixing them together, and you're trying to neutralize them. I mean, you're trying to make them pH neutral, which is 7. And when you do this, when you mix an acid and a base together to neutralize them, you make two things. You make salt and you make water. The reason why that's so great is it makes it a little bit easier to dispose of or to, say, maybe put it in storage or if you need that salt to be uh, created. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this, okay? All right, so we see the problem here. It says it's a titration of HCl with sodium hydroxide. It's got 55 milliliters of a base were required to neutralize it with 150 milliliters of 4.0 molar HCl. Now, the first thing they ask us to do is to write a neutralization re, uh, reaction for this equation. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take care of that. Okay, uh, let's see. So we've got uh, HCl and we have, these are our reactants, and we have sodium hydroxide. Now, what we need to do is figure out the products. Now, we know it's gotta be water and a salt, and we probably could eyeball this and get it right away. But what we really need to do is we need to really look at the ions that are involved here. So what we're going to do is we're going to break these acids and bases down into their ions. Now, a hydrogen ion is an H plus 1. A chloride ion is Cl negative 1. Sodium is Na plus 1. And hydroxide is an OH negative 1. Now, what we're going to do is... On the other side, the product side, we're going to go ahead and leave the uh, positive ions first as they are. So we'll write down H plus 1 first, or just H plus, and then first again we'll write sodium. We're not putting these two together, but we're making sure that they come in the front of the equation. Uh, excuse me, in the front of the products, just like always. Because your cations get written first, then your anions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change their anions. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and give uh, hydrogen, that's a plus one, this OH, that's negative one, okay? That's its new partner. And then sodium, we're going to give its new partner, which is the Cl negative one. So that Cl negative one will go now to sodium. So now we know our products will be water and the salt of NaCl. And since all of these ions have ones and negative ones, then we don't have to worry about writing any coefficients to balance them. So we need to make sure that our uh, balanced equation is written a little bit neater and not around all these ions. So I'm just going to rewrite it. So we have HCl plus NaOH yields water and sodium chloride. Okay. So that completes that part of the question. So we now have our neutralization reaction. Now, since they ask us to do a neutralization reaction, we can use a little bit, uh, a little formula that comes in really handy to keep us from having to do a little bit more uh, intensive or a, a little bit more frustrating stoichiometric calculation. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. So basically, what we get to use is this. You find out how many hydrogen ions you have, and you multiply it by its molarity and its volume, okay, that's in the problem. And then you do the same thing for the number of hydroxide ions. You multiply it by its molarity and by its volume. Now, that volume does not have to be in liters. Uh, it can be in milliliters. Just make sure that both volumes are in the same units, so make sure both are milliliters or both are liters, okay? All right, now let's go ahead and um, look at this. Now, if we look at the equation up there, uh, well, really we only have to look at the equation. We can just look up here. Notice that you only have one hydrogen. Since we only have, you probably couldn't see what I circled. All right, since we only have one hydrogen there, then we only, we're only going to write one there for the H. Okay, I probably shouldn't use brackets. I probably should have used parentheses, so sorry. But I'm just going to stick with my brackets because that's what I'm used to doing. Uh, so parentheses around my 1. Now molarity, if you remember, the molarity of our acid was 4. So I'm going to write 4 there. I should have wrote 4.0. But anyway, our volume is the 150 milliliters. And 
the number of hydroxide ions, looking at this uh, formula up here, we've only got one. So we're going to go ahead and write a one there. And its molarity, uh, well, they didn't really give it to us. They asked us to find it, though. But the volume they gave us was 55 milliliters. Okay. I know I'm not taking the time out to write my units, but I keep track of them at the end. Now, our molarity, I'm just going to put an M there. Now, we need to do a little bit of algebra. Need to do some algebra, bruh. Okay. So, what we'll do here is we will solve for M by moving the 1 and the 55 to the other side, meaning I'm dividing both sides by 55, or I'm dividing both sides by 1 times 55 to move it away from the M. So, uh, to get the M by itself, I'm going to put the 1 and the 55 underneath the 1, the 4, and the 150. And since I don't have to worry about moving the 1, the 4, and the 150 because they're already on the other side, I can just write them down again. Okay, And then I'm going to put the 1 and the 55 on the bottom there. Now when I do this, and I punch this into the handy-dandy cheat later, I get 10.9 and some change. Now, granted, uh, if, you, if, you know, if you don't really believe me in everything, I can punch that in for you uh, really quickly. <laughs> All right, let's turn this on. We've got uh, 1 times 4 times 150 divided by 1 divided by 55. We end up getting 10.9090909090909 repeating. Okay, I know it ends in a 1 there, but it's probably 09 that just got rounded. All right, so that's 10.9 molarity of NaOH. Now, if you go back and look at the number of sig figs, it really should be 2. I'm a fan of 3. I should have made sure to, to have had an extra 0 on that 4.0. So that was my fault. I'm sorry, guys. All right. So really, then, our molarity should be 11. 11 molar NaOH. Okay. So whatever your uh, teacher would tell you for the number of sig figs, you know, then go with that. I love 3 myself. My students know that. But sometimes even 3 doesn't make sense to use. So just follow the sig fig rules and you'll always be right. Okay, so really we should write 11 molar NaOH. That's why I have it down there. But my personal favorite is 3. All right, we're done with that one. So now let's look at our second problem. Okay, now on this one they, they don't even ask us to calculate the uh, equation, which we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, so oh, I went down too far. So let's go ahead and write down the equation that we'll be using. So we'll be using the number of hydroxide uh, excuse me the number of hydrogen ions times its molarity times its volume equals the number of hydroxide ions times its molarity times its volume so looking at the equation here notice that we've got three hydrogens so this time three hydrogen ions is going to be written down in the equation so we have three OHs uh, excuse me three H's so, we'll write down a 3 for that. And its molarity is 0 0.0200, and its volume is 75. Okay. Now, how many hydroxides? Well, looking at KOH, there's only one. So, we're only going to write one there. Okay. So, let's write one. Equals 1 times the concentration of that hydroxide, which... That's what they're asking us to find, so we'll just write an M, and the volume, which was 45. So we'll write 45 here. Now, this is just like the previous problem. We're trying to solve this for M, so you can go 1 times 45 and get 45, or you can go ahead and divide both sides by 45, or divide both sides by 1 times 45. Either way, you'll get M equals 3 times 0. 0, 2, 0, 0 times 75 divided by 1 times 45. Okay. Now when we punch this into the handy dandy cheat later, let's do that. We will get the following. We get 3 times 0 0.0200 0 times 75 divided by 1 divided by 45. Enter. We get exactly 0.1. Okay. So that means that we get this. We get M equals 0 0.1 molar. Now, 
that's not the correct number, sig figs. <laughs> uh, looking at the problem, we've got three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. Like I said, I'm a fan of three sig figs. Um, then really, we should have three sig figs. So that's going to be 0 0.100. That would be three sig figs there. Molar, but molar for what? Well, they said it was for potassium hydroxide, so we'll write KOH there. And that will equal our M. Okay, that's our answer. <laughs> now, um, some people may be wondering, what about the equation? Well, let's go ahead and write it down really quickly, just so we can look at it. Because I want to go over the dimensional analysis of this. Okay, so here is our equation. There's our first acid. There's our base. And if we were to combine these, we know we were going to make water and a salt. Now, to figure out the salt, what you can do is you can eyeball the potassium here and write its ion somewhere over here. Let's go ahead and, and do that. Okay, so uh, that's going to be K plus 1. And now we're going to write the other ion, which is this PO4. We're going to write it over here. Uh, that's going to be PO4 has a charge of negative 3. So if we cross those down, we get K3PO4. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll be K3PO4. Now we need to balance this equation. So we'll need to put a 3 in front of the KOH. And we'll need to put a 3 in front of the water. Okay. Now... If you're wondering what the dimensional analysis, the stoichiometric calculation would look like for this, I'm going to show you. <laughs> First thing that we would have to do is record all the information down here. Okay. All right. So when we record the information, they said that we had 75 milliliters of H3PO4 and we had 0 0.0200 molar concentration of that of that acid. Now they also told us that we had 45 milliliters of the base, and they wanted us to find the number for, you know, basically find the number of uh, concentration for the base. All right, so this is what we have here. So this is what the dimensional analysis of this would look like. It would look like this. First thing we would do is start out with the 75 milliliters of the H3PO4. I'm just going to write 75 milliliters. And we're going to put that over 1. Now, diagonal to the bottom, I will have 1,000 milliliters. I'm just trying to show you why this formula is so helpful. So that gives us... Uh, 1,000 milliliters in the bottom, then 1 milliliter on top. Now, they did tell us the molarity was 0 0.0200. And if you remember, molarity is the number of moles over 1 liter. So diagonally in the bottom, I will go ahead and write 1 liter. And then on top, I'm going to write 0 0.0200. And instead of writing the big M, I'm just going to write the word moles. But this is going to be moles of H3PO4. All right, now once I do that, I want to use the balanced equation. There is one mole of H3PO4, okay? And then I'm going to use that to jump to the other quantity, which is the KOH. There are three moles of KOH, okay? Now, this is good. I now have moles of this base on top. Now I need liters on the bottom to get molarity. Well, the only thing is... They didn't give me liters. They only gave me 45 milliliters. So what I'm going to do with that is, since I need it in the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the bottom. So diagonal to the bottom uh, from the KOH, I'm going to go ahead and put my milliliters there because I need my volume amount in the denominator. And I'm just going to put an arbitrary 1 on the top. So I'm going to have 1 over 45 milliliters. And what that does is that will put the volume in the denominator and it will allow my ones that I've written in the front and on the back to cancel out this one here and this one because I need that volume in the bottom okay now up on top that would give me 1000 milliliters and then on the bottom that would give me one liter now look at that this is one two three four five six steps instead of just using that formula I, I prefer the formula because it makes your life easier okay, and, and it's faster, especially in the lab. Okay, all right. So lo and behold, let's punch this into the handy dandy cheat later. All right, so we'll punch this in. Wow, I don't even think I can fit it on the screen. Nope, not without covering up my, uh, you know, wonderful self there. All right, so we have seventy-five times one times zero point zero two hundred times 3 times 1 times 1 
times a thousand. That's all the numerators. Okay. I don't have to do the ones, but I just do it just so we can see everything being entered in. Divided by one, divided by a thousand, divided by one, divided by one, divided by <laughs> 45. divided by one we press enter and lo and behold we get point one and that's exactly what we got using that little formula okay so i think that if i were you i would use that little formula because this is a lot of work now this gives us 0 0.1 moles okay over a liter which is the same thing as 0 0.1 molarity now we need it to have three sig figs, so that's going to be 0 0.100 molarity of our base, which is KOH. And basically, that molarity has to have 45 milliliters of it. <laughs> so we have to have 45 milliliters of 0 0.100 molarity of KOH. Now, I have shown you that using the long dimensional analysis, you can still calculate this, but I think the formula is a little bit easier. Okay. All right, guys. I hope that this video was helpful. And if it was, I'm glad. If you have any questions, if you need me to look at anything, you want something worked out, just message me, send it to me, and I'll do my best. And if I got time, I'll do it. All right, guys. I hope this was helpful. You have a good one.